The interviewer spit into the coffee and asked the interviewee to sell it within two minutes. Unexpectedly, the interviewee picked up the coffee and drank it in one gulp. Everyone stared at him as if he were a fool. He took out $20 and said, I'll buy this cup of coffee. He was really tough. The boss laughed and gave him a two-day trial period. But this is India's top securities trading company, where the average education level is Harvard or Oxford. Marsh, who came from a rural area with an average education, had just stepped in, and the real challenge was just beginning. On his first day of work, a beautiful female supervisor gave him a death list. Of the 50 toughest customers who the company had spent two years trying to persuade to buy or sell stocks, the previous person who took over this list committed suicide by jumping off a building because he had zero performance. Marsh instantly understood that. The two-day trial period was just a joke in their eyes. However, he was not willing to give up and still made phone calls one by one. The first call was hung up mercilessly before he could even finish his self-introduction. The second call, the third call, all the way up to the 49th call ended in failure. Only the last one was left, Jay from Kelly Pharmaceuticals. Unfortunately, Jay was in the midst of an unprecedented crisis. His company was being targeted by rivals. Negative rumors were spreading everywhere, and the stock price had dropped by 20 points. It was like asking for trouble to contact him at this time. His colleagues were enjoying the show, and were cheering loudly on the side. <laughs> Marsh didn't give up and still made the call. Yeah, what? No one expected that. Under pressure from the board of directors, Jay urgently needed to sell 200,000 shares, worth $39.6 million. What a lucky break for Marsh. He immediately stood up and urged all his colleagues to persuade their clients to buy in quickly. But his colleagues cursed him and called him crazy. Marsh shouted that Kelly Pharmaceuticals had survived for 20 years and couldn't be defeated by 20 minutes of rumors. No one believed him, and someone even threw a ball at him. However, at this moment, the female supervisor who had been making things difficult for him all along, managed to persuade a client to buy all the shares. The transaction amount was $39.6 million, and the poor guy got a commission of $800,000. His colleagues, who had just been mocking him, came running over to praise him. Marsh was too excited, and his blood rushed to his brain, making him unable to resist running to the bathroom to vomit. <laughs> When he came out, he still had a smile on his face. He walked up to the female supervisor and shook hands with her to make peace. That night, the female supervisor took him to an upscale party, where wealthy businessmen gathered, and any one of them could easily boost their performance. However, Marsh was only interested in one person, Nick. Nick was his idol since childhood, and although he came from a rural area like Marsh, he had become a business tycoon. While Nick was in the bathroom, Marsh followed him without hesitation. A few minutes later. His name is Nick, a legend in the business world, who was particularly skilled at playing with stocks. That day, Nick attended a cocktail party, where a friend next to him revealed that an agricultural stock would soar tomorrow. Everyone hurried to buy. But suddenly, Marsh burst in and shouted, Don't buy it. Everyone looked confused and asked who he was. He replied, I'm just a junior employee of a securities company, but trust me, this stock is going to drop. The wealthy businessman next to him laughed at him for overestimating himself, but Nick seemed to believe him. The next day, Marsh kept an eye on the stock, as it rose to 600, but due to farmer resistance, the large corporation's investment failed, and the stock price plummeted rapidly. Marsh was right. Later, Nick came to the company and asked Marsh, how did you know that the agricultural company's stock would drop? Marsh said that the company buys land on a large scale whenever it enters a new country, but Indian farmers have a deep attachment to their land and would not agree to sell. Nick appreciated his insight and handed Marsh a check to invest on his behalf. When Marsh opened it, he saw that it was for $10 billion. From then on, Marsh became famous and rose to become a stockbroker worth billions. However, Nick's money was not easy to come by. The higher one stands, the harder one falls. Marsh studied day and night and finally spotted an opportunity. When a flash flood broke out in a certain area and all the shelters were destroyed, Marsh knew that the nephew of the local leader was the owner of the construction company that would inevitably be awarded this major project. So he immediately invested 500,000 shares in the company. But things didn't go as planned. The news came out that the construction company boss was the one responsible for the flood. His company was completely seized and declared bankrupt. In his first battle, Marsh lost $120 million. Nick immediately called Marsh and asked him to make up for the loss within a week. Marsh was under tremendous pressure and went out to drink alone that night. Unexpectedly, he met his beautiful supervisor there, who told him that she had insider information, that Kathy Paints had been acquired by a US company, and would be officially announced tomorrow. 
causing the stock price to double. Marsh hesitated, knowing that trading stocks with insider information was illegal, but he was desperate for this opportunity. The supervisor sneered and said, you either abandon your principles or quit. Despite being timid, Marsh was too desperate and couldn't resist the temptation. The next day, Marsh bought heavily into Kathy Paints as soon as the market opened. As expected, the news of the acquisition was announced, and the stock price soared from 40 rupees to 70 rupees. By the end of the day, Marsh had made a net profit of 2 billion rupees. After becoming rich overnight, Marsh moved into a luxury apartment, wore designer clothes, and partied in bars every night. Nick also treated him as his right-hand man, inviting him to various high-end gatherings, and introducing him to his financial circle. Marsh was convinced that this was the life he had always dreamed of, but what he didn't know was that, they had already attracted the attention of the financial regulators, and that Nick was far more complicated than he appeared on the surface. A few moments later. One day, Nick suddenly asked Marsh to take a break and go home. Marsh was stunned and wondered if Nick was trying to get rid of him. It turned out that in Marsh's hometown, there was a small company called Sky Communications that had qualified to bid for the 4G communication license. Nick had already bribed a high-ranking government official and planned to win the bid in the name of this company. He sent Marsh there in advance to investigate. Marsh returned home in glory and immediately told his family to invest all of their wealth into Sky Communications. Excited to receive insider information Information, the family hugged each other. After returning, Nick announced that he would invest in Sky Communications and appointed Marsh as the legal representative to run the company. With powerful publicity, the company was eagerly bought up by countless investors. As soon as it went public, causing the stock price to soar, Marsh basked in the limelight, and news headlines reported that this poor boy from the countryside was about to become a financial tycoon like Nick. However, finance can lift you up to the clouds, but it can also make you crash in an instant. In the final bidding results, Sky Communications failed to win the bid, and the company company's stock price plummeted, bringing it to the brink of bankruptcy. Marsh panicked and immediately tried to contact Nick to find out what was going on, but he couldn't reach him. Then, the securities regulator came and took him away. It turned out that an hour before the bidding results were announced, someone sold the 40 billion shares of Sky Communications, cheating countless investors out of their hard-earned money. Marsh finally realized that Sky Communications' participation in the bidding was just a cover-up. The real intention was to use him to buy low and sell high, swindling a huge amount of money. Nick pushed Marsh to the forefront and took all the blame. Marsh became a scapegoat, but fortunately, the head of the securities regulator told him that all his previous crimes would be wiped out if he cooperated in finding evidence of Nick's bribery. Marsh rushed to Nick's house to demand an explanation, and Nick told him the truth without hiding anything. It turned out that Nick had arranged for Marsh to become a stock trader from the beginning. Marsh inadvertently sold the low-priced stocks of Kelly Pharmaceuticals, which was actually due to Nick spreading rumors to lower the stock price. Nick then used a beautiful executive who was also his person, to buy the stocks at a low price using insider information, and she deliberately created an opportunity for Marsh to meet Nick. Everything was a trap, and Nick pushed Marsh step by step, into the position of the legal representative of Sky Communications. Nick even admitted to the bribery truth, because he was not afraid at all. The securities regulator had not found any clues for so many years, so what ability did Marsh have to turn things around? Feeling desperate, Marsh went to the rooftop, knowing that jumping off would be easy, but surviving would be hard. He recalled all his past with Nick and suddenly remembered some important information. Nick once said that people should not forget their roots. When Nick became wealthy, he smuggled diamonds on trains. Marsh speculated that the bribery of officials was most likely done using diamonds that were not easily detectable. He told this to the securities regulator, which immediately launched a search of the suspicious train. As expected, they found a large number of diamonds in the train driver's lunchbox. In the end, Marsh successfully sent his idol, mentor, and even his spiritual father to prison, and he was left with nothing. No, he couldn't say that he had nothing. Through this ordeal, he may have truly gained the wealth that would benefit him for a lifetime.